In the first video, I'll be going through how to export and import the Revit door finish data to MongoDB. In the CloudDB project, we can see that some doors have finished values and some don't. In the Jacobian Dev tab, I'll export the door data, which we can check in MongoDB Compass. Here we can see that the doors collection has been created. I'll start by navigating to Visual Studio where I have a CloudDB plugin set up. If you're not sure how to set this up, I've added a link in the description for the first video in the channel on how to create a plugin in Revit. I've also got a ribbon panel which can be found in the Jacobian Dev tab. I'll be adding a split button group for the export and import functionality. I'll start by declaring a new function named add split button group which requires a ribbon panel as a parameter. First, I'll get the assembly path, which is the path to the folder the application is being compiled to. I'll get this by calling the get executing assembly function. I'll then declare a new split button data variable named sb data, which calls the new split button data function, which requires the name and text split group as string parameters. Next, I'll declare a new split button, which I'll add to the panel as a split button. Next, I'll declare a new push button data variable named export data, which calls the new push button data method, which requires the button name as the first parameter, the text as the second, the third input is the assembly path, and finally, the command that will be called when the button is clicked. I'll then declare the export button as a push button and then add the push button to the split button passing the export data as a parameter. I'll then define the tooltip message that will be displayed when you hover over the button as export revit door data. Next, I'll declare the source image URI as export URI, which is the path to the image resource. The icon image will be stored in the resources folder with the file name mongo.exp. I'll then create the bitmap image, passing the export URI as a parameter. And lastly, I'll set the large image property of the button to the export bitmap image. I'll then add a separator to the split button. Next, I'll copy the button and URI data below. I'll then change all the copied export values to import. And this should handle the import button. Back in the onStartup method, I'll call the split button function and pass the ribbon panel as a parameter. Here is the output of what the split button should look like. Next, in the Solution Explorer, I'll add a new door class. In the class, I'll change internal to public. I'll then declare a new string type variable named id, which implements the get and set auto property. I'll then declare the door family type. Next, I'll declare the door mark value. And lastly, the door finish value. Next, I'll add a new door data class which will handle the door properties. I'll start by adding the Autodesk Revit DB reference. I'll then change internal to public and implement the door interface. I'll then declare a new door data constructor class which requires the door element as a parameter. Next, I'll declare a new door finish parameter, which calls the get parameter method and requires the built in parameter door finish as a parameter. I'll then declare a string variable instance named dfinish. I'll then check if the door finish has a value. If true, I'll get the door finish parameter value as a string. If false, I'll set dfinish to an empty string. 
I'll set the ID equal to the door's unique ID. I'll also set the family type equal to the door's name. For the mark string value, I'll call the getParameter method, which requires the built in parameter all model mark as a parameter. Lastly, I'll set the door finish value equal to the dfinish value. Next, I'll add the door API class, which will contain the API methods. Before I get started, I need to add the REST Sharp package to handle the REST requests. I'll search for REST Sharp. And I'll add version 105.22. Once that's done, back in the door API class, I'll add the rest shop and system net references. I'll then change internal to public and declare a new Boolean variable named use cloud server, which I'll set to false. Next, I'll declare a string constant named base URL local, which will be the local host URL for testing. I'll also declare the base URL cloud, which will be the Heroku URL for production. Next, I'll declare a REST API base URL function, which gets and returns the base URL based on the use cloud server value. Next, I'll declare the get REST function which will get the door data from MongoDB and requires a collection name as a parameter. I'll then declare a new REST client named client and pass the REST API base URL as a parameter. Next, I'll declare a new REST request. I'll append API and the collection name doors to the URL string I'll then call the REST Sharp GET function. I'll declare a new iREST response variable that returns a list of type door, which calls the client's execute method, which requires the request as a parameter. Lastly, I'll return the response data. Next, I'll declare the post batch REST function which will batch post the door data to MongoDB and requires the content as the first parameter, the error message as the second, the collection name as the third, and lastly a list of the door data. I'll declare a new REST client named client and pass the REST API base URL as a parameter. I'll then declare a new REST request. I'll append the API, the collection name. I'll append batch. I'll then call the REST shop post function. Next, I'll set the REST request format to JSON. I'll then call the request add body method and pass the door data as a parameter. Next, I'll declare a new iREST response variable which calls the client's execute method and requires the request as a parameter. I'll then set the content equal to the response content and the error message equal to the response error message. Lastly, I'll return the response status code. Next, in the Solution Explorer, I'll rename the command class to export command. In the class, I'll start by adding the system net reference. I'll then declare an export batch function, which requires a filtered element collector as the first parameter and a reference message as the second. I'll declare a new door data list of type door. I'll then declare a new status code instance and two string variables. 
JSON response and error message. Next, I'll declare a new result variable and equate it to result succeed. I'll then iterate through the doors collection and add the element door data to the door data list. Next, I'll equate the status code to a REST function by calling the door API post batch function, which requires the JSON response as the first parameter, the error message as the second parameter, the collection name as the third, and the door data as the fourth. I'll check if the status code is empty. If true, I'll set the message equal to the error message. I'll also set the result to result failed. Lastly, I'll return the result. Next, above the export class, I'll set the transaction mode to read only. Back in the execute function, I'll declare a new filtered element collector passing the document as a parameter. The collector will be of class. I'll get all family instances of category, built-in category doors. Next, I'll call the export batch function and pass the door collector as the first parameter and the reference message as the second. If the result is equal to result succeeded, I'll display a door data task dialog that states that the door data was successfully exported. If the result is equal to result failed, I'll display a door data task dialog that states that something went wrong. I'll then return the result. Next, in the Solution Explorer, I'll add a new import command class. In the class, I'll start by adding the Autodesk Revit DB and Revit UI references. I'll then change internal to public and add the iExternal command interface. The interface should implement the execute member, which requires the external command data as the first parameter, a string message which can be returned if the command throws an error, and lastly, an element set indicating problem elements to display in a failure dialog. Next, I'll declare a UI application variable from the command data application. I'll then get the current document from the active UI document. Next, I'll declare a list of type door, which will call the door API get function and requires the collection name doors as a parameter. If the door collection is not null, and the door collection count is greater than zero. I'll define a new transaction, passing the document as the first parameter, and the transaction name import door data as the second. I'll start the transaction. I'll then iterate through the doors list and declare a string UID from the door's ID value. I'll then get the door element by calling the documents get element method, passing the UID as a parameter. I'll then declare a new string variable dfinish from the door's door finish value. Next, I'll declare door finish parameter, which calls the elements get parameter method and requires the built in parameter door finish as a parameter. I'll then set the door finish parameter by passing dfinish as a parameter. I'll commit the transaction and display an import door data task dialog stating that the door data was successfully imported. 
Lastly, I'll return result succeeded. I'll add the Autodesk Revit attribute reference. I'll then set the transaction mode to manual. Before running the project, I have a Node.js MongoDB server already running. I'll be going through how to create it in the next video. Back in Visual Studio, I'll run the project. I'll select Always Load to load the add-in. I'll open the Cloud DB project. In the Jacobian Dev tab, I'll export the DOR data, which I can check by navigating to MongoDB Compass. I'll select the newly created DOORS collection and I'll edit some of the DOOR finish values. Back in Revit, I'll import the DOOR data. As you can see, the DOORS update with the DOOR finish values. That should be it for this video. Please stay tuned for the next one where I'll be going through how to create a MongoDB Node.js server. Also do like, share and subscribe.